This podcast is an expression of the personal views and opinions of the hosts and guests, and they do not represent the official stance of the podcast, its sponsors, or affiliated organizations. The podcast may cover topics such as drugs, mental illness, politics, and religion, which can be controversial or sensitive. The podcast does not support any illegal activities and advises listeners to seek help from appropriate professionals for any personal concerns related to these topics. The information provided in the podcast is for general informational purposes only, and it is not a substitute for professional advice. Listeners are urged to consult with a qualified healthcare professional for any questions regarding their mental or physical health. The podcast and its creators are not responsible for any loss or harm resulting from the use or reliance on the information provided in the podcast. Turn my mic up. Let's get it on. What's going on, Street Stoics? Welcome back to the Street Stoic Podcast, hosted by Jay and Nate. And tonight, we brought back Mike. Ego and judgment are closely related because ego is seen as the source of our judgments and our opinions about the world. The Stoics believed that our ego, or sense of self, is formed by our beliefs and values and that our judgments about things are rooted in a sense of self. According to the Stoics, our judgments and opinions can lead to negative emotions and reactions such as anger, anxiety, and even fear. Therefore, they believe that it is important to cultivate a sense of detachment from our judgments and to learn to view things objectively. Jay, I know you've got a quote regarding uh, judgment. Let's hear what you got. Oh, yeah, I definitely got one. Uh, yeah. This one's going to be from, uh, obviously, the the one that introduced me to stoicism mr uh, marcus aurelius uh and it goes enter people's minds and you'll find the judges you're so afraid of and how judiciary or judiciously they judge themselves the the what i'm reading here is kind of letting you know, hey, the way that that you perceive things and 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 feel that, you know, people judge you and you have to live a certain way because you fear the judgment of certain people. It's it's basically set, telling you that just if you put yourself into their shoes and you were to hear the thoughts that they had and understand that we all have the same thing going on and that all this judgment that we think that happens to us that people do it's it's just emptiness it's not it's not something that we should hold value to when our focus should be on ourselves and improving ourselves that's that's what I get from that. Um, just kind of telling you, screw screw people's judgment. You know, they can think whatever they want. They don't live in your shoes. They don't experience what you experience. They don't have the thoughts that you have. So why why dictate or why allow those people to kind of control the way that you live? by just what they may think about you. So yeah, that's what I get from that, man. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's deep stuff, man. What you guys got on that? It is, it is. And, dude, the whole time when you're saying this, it makes me think about that saying, it might be a quote, I can't recall, uh, 
But, you know, like, a boat doesn't sink unless water gets inside. You know what I mean? And if you let other people's judgments, opinions, whatever, start affecting the way that we're thinking, then, yeah, it's 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 going to affect your thoughts, your emotions, your actions, and things like that. And the stoic way is focusing on what we can control. And yeah, dude, I mean, I think that's pretty spot on. It's pretty, yeah. What do you think, Mike? I, it reminds me of something that uh, Abraham Lincoln said. Um, and he said it in regards to how the North viewed the South during the Civil War. And um, he said they are they are just what we would be if we were in their situation. Um, and so to me, like it, 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 it takes, you, you shouldn't focus on what people are doing and let that control your opinion about them. Uh, we're, we're all going through something and we don't know what the root cause of that is. We don't know how that is affecting that person. Um, we hear what they're going through and our human nature is to make a judgment about that. Um, when in all actuality, it's not any of, it's not our, our right to even judge any of that. Right. And there's so many factors that go into it too, right? Like maybe that person has shared quite a bit with us and we think, think we have like this spot on idea of what exactly it is they're going through and we're trying to solve problems and stuff but the thing is unless you are them you haven't experienced everything and you're two different people you have different thoughts you have different perspectives even though it may be similar right it's it's different yeah dude jay that that's a uh, that's awesome it's kind of like what we were talking about earlier this week, Nate, when uh, we were talking about the difference between sympathy and empathy, right? We, uh, right. we, you know, sympathy can be a very good thing, right? It's the beginning of empathy. But once we have, um, once sympathy starts the empathy part, like we need to stop with the sympathy um, and judging yes. that person on what they're going through and have empathy for them. We can control that we have empathy uh, towards somebody right. and towards what they're going, to, going through. But it just remind me of the conversation we had earlier, earlier this week. Yeah. I'd say that's pretty spot on. Pretty spot on. Jay, any last thoughts on that? So I go back to the whole, like, episode one and the conversation about how, like, things have began changing for me after an experience that I had. And one of the weird things that kind of has become normal now for me is when I go out and and you know kind of engage and experience you know outside of you know my own apartment and my environment here i go outside and i have interactions with just random people in the back of my head for for just you know always every situation i always think this person is acting or conducting themselves based upon the limited uh information or upbringing that they had so the fact that they're doing something that may not be approved here is is just the differences that we have going on where it's somebody else from a different perspective of life you know this guy had a lot of issues and he was never you know they they sometimes people aren't ever shown or demonstrated something better and so their attitude just is a reflection of who who raised them so they go out into this world and they do things. So when I see things like that, you know, um, 
people just acting rowdy or just doing things that it just doesn't seem to kind of make sense. I, I have that sympathy because that's what I that's what I see. I I, I, I sympathize that. that instead of judging in that situation it's probably it's just better to understand that we all are different we all go through different things we all go through um problems we all have our own things going on you know some people have it worse than others and that's just how it is in society and to judge a certain person just because they're going through these problems and not realizing or sympathizing that you have to look past that you have to actually look beyond to the past and see you know what's this what what led this person to this point in their life to be you know this particular way that's that's always the answer because either lack of education lack of you know whatever the scenario whatever the situation is there's always a lack of that yeah definitely you know, on the Street Stoic podcast, we reference perception quite a bit. Jay, would you mind pulling up uh, like some similarities or a comparison between judgment and perception? Because I feel like both of those things are cr- just closely related. So, like, perception is individualized right and you can have as an individual perception over like a group of people and stuff like that but it's basically owned by you and i feel once we get the response here that judgment and perception are like just hand in hand like they 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 go together all right we're pulling it up right now jay what you got i can't i can't read it it's too small (laughs) i got it it says yes there are similarities similarities between judgment and perception in fact the two are closely related and often in intertwined perception refers to the process by which we become aware of and interpret sensory information from the world around us this information is then filtered through our individual beliefs, values, and experiences, which can shape our judgments about what we perceive. For example, if we see someone walking down the street wearing clothes that we deem inappropriate or unfashionable, we might form a negative judgment about that person based on our perception of their appearance. Conversely, if we perceive someone as being kind or helpful, we might form a positive judgment about them based on our perception of their actions. In both cases, our judgments are influenced by our perceptions. However, it's important to recognize that our perceptions can be biased or incomplete, and that our judgments may not always be accurate or fair. Story philosophy emphasizes that importance of being aware of our own perceptions and judgments and striving to see things as they truly are rather than as we would like them to be. By cultivating a sense of inner clarity and self-awareness, we can begin to overcome our biases and perceptions and make more informed and objective judgments about the world around us. Damn, that's fire, man. I thought that there might be, you know, uh, a little hand-in-hand action there, but dang. Yep, I love learning. And so, like, uh, what it makes me think is, like, if you have a thought, right, and whether it's positive or negative or it just is, it's it's a thought. It's almost as if you need to challenge it. Like, is this positive? Or if it's a negative thought, like, should should this be negative? 
I kind of like that. And I think that goes hand in hand with what Mike and I were talking about at work the other day, too. Uh, the whole sympathy and empathy thing. You, you, you know, you don't know exactly what somebody's going through. Man, dude, that's perfect. You have to ask yourself, why is it negative, right? Uh, if you see yeah. something that is negative or is something that is, uh, is different, you know, instead of asking what's wrong, what happened, right? Um, right. so yeah, it, it, you're right. It, it, it's hand in hand per, perception and judgment because our perceptions control our judgments, right? And you have yeah. to, like what you're saying, Nate is you have to uh we can control right what our perception is but we have to work at it it takes practice um into thinking of of Definitely. what is what is what happened not not what's wrong i think yeah. i got something yeah i got a i got something that i just thought about that kind of ties in both kind of the perception and and judgment um, a little personal thing, you know, I, I, I went to school, have a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. When I finished um, school, I was trying to get into a police department. And somehow, luckily at the time, for me, uh, there was a hiring freeze. It sucked because that meant that there was nothing for me to look forward to. So I ended up in, in the security field. Yeah. Uh, the reasons I eventually kind of felt a little bit more discouraged or just decided that's not the career I want to pursue ended up being because I was noticing at the time how pe cops were being judged based on a video, a clip that only shows the moment something is happening and at that time, it you know all these other social medias weren't around, so you're not seeing the full length video of you know what the the, the incident was. So all you were seeing was a, a, the worst aspect of a police officer, and how people would just run off and be judgmental about that, and just have like the most negative opinions about police officers of that one. But then eventually, in some cases, after investigations, you find out, oh, there was stuff that happened before they started recording. And right. no, no one ever considers that, that there, there's another perspective in this situation that involves the rest of the context. And that's where I just felt that the, the public opinion and view and perspective has become a lot more negative to police officers so that kind of discouraged me from going into the field because i i didn't i felt like i didn't need that stress i feel like that's a stress to have to live with everybody just ha having a complete you know negative uh perspective and and and, and opinion about uh, someone in, in uniform just because there has been some bad police officers out there and everyone just kind of judges and, and, and wants to generalize and say, you know, they're all cops or they're all assholes. And I'm like, they're all individuals. Everyone is, is completely different than the other. So they're not all like that. Right. And that's a common thing too. Cause some people might be listening to this right now and be like, yeah, F cops or whatever. But the same could be applied to any demographic, really. Uh, you know, it could be about race, culture, religion. We've seen it all throughout history. And if those things are unsettling to you, that's a perception thing. So we got to focus on what we can control. Uh, if that's going to interrupt you, you know, moving forward, think about uh, most of us have tried to rent an apartment. And for ever since, you know, at least the 80s, apartment complexes, they would ban certain breeds of dogs. Okay, they'd say, you can't have X dog because it's an aggressive breed. And 
you know, I think the most recent one was pit bulls, right? Pit bulls are fighting dogs. So you can't have a pit bull here. Pit bulls are actually small, so they meet the the weight requirement of a lot of different apartments. Uh, the other the other thing that we're not looking at is before pit bulls, it was Rottweilers. People are like Rottweilers are scary because they're so aggressive. And then it was Dobermans before that. And then before that, it was German Shepherds, and all those breeds you're kind of like oh man those might be a little bit scary but guess what in that mix between now and the 80s labrador retrievers golden labs black labs chocolate labs those were banned in most apartment complexes rather because they were known as an aggressive breed and so are they aggressive breeds i don't know it's they're fun. just dogs what's that since when have have Labradors been <laughs> aggressive dogs? I don't recall what year it was. I remember I had to research it for some school project. But yeah, I was surprised to see labs and retrievers on there. And, you know, like a quick Google search could uh, back it up. But I'll let people do that on their own. And the <laughs> thing is, is generally we all know, okay, it's it's not the dog's fault. It's... You know, the owner not socializing it or not treating it good and training things like that. Either way, I'm, I'm digressing a little bit here. To get back on topic, it's our perception that drives that judgment, right? And if we allow those things to basically make up our mind for us, then it's going to happen. And we're not going to be focusing on what we can control and so if you're going down this stoic journey the stoic route with us you got to start focusing on what you can control if you're starting to see your perception of things is leaning a certain way and your judgment comes out next and then now all of a sudden you can't control your thoughts it's you know it's like road rage why why are you actually mad yeah, that person could have done something dangerous. What, what could you control about the situation? And focus on that. You don't have to have a reaction to everything. That sometimes things just are. So, all right. Uh, I think we're pretty good on this. Any last comments there, fellas? No, I'm getting nopes. All right, so... Next on the list here, we got Mike. Mike, I know you prepared a couple of quotes for us, or at least a quote. What you got? Yeah, and it kind of piggybacks off of what you just were talking about, Nate. Um, it's from Epictetus. It's uh, what upsets people is not things themselves, but their judgment about things. Um, Damn. I don't. I don't know if he, Epictetus was talking about um, like physical things or if he's talking about situations. Um, but I, I, I like this quote because it applies to a lot of different things. It applies to physical things, right? Um, judgment about how somebody looks, how um, somebody's talking physical things that we're actually seeing, hearing, smelling, all that stuff. Um, it also applies to situations too. Um, so if you're uh, letting situations uh, control your feelings about them, right? Yet we all go through shitty things. We all go through hard times, but there's something that's gonna that's good that's gonna come out of that, right? Um, you just have to find it. Uh, and again, it kind of circles back into the physical things, right? There's there's people are maybe presenting in one way that we maybe don't necessarily agree with, uh, but I guarantee you that they have something to offer, that they have some that something that we can we can learn from. Uh, and this is something that I actively have to practice every every second of every day um, is not getting upset. Uh, you know, you use the road rage example. I 
I have bad road rage. Uh, and so, especially if I'm going to be, if I know I'm going to be late somewhere and, but I can't control how other drivers are going to be driving. I can't control if there's going to be construction. I can't control, um, I can't control if somebody gets in a car accident and I'm, I'm stuck in traffic, right? I can't control any of that, but what can I control? I can, if I know that I need to be somewhere, let, let's leave 10 minutes earlier, right? I'm taking control of that, that situation instead of letting it upset me um, and then get more upset when there's obstacles in the way, right? I can, I, I, there's something I can do to fix that. You know, it's funny. I don't know if uh, Jay remembers this, but when we worked together, I, it was about an hour drive for me. Uh, to get from my house to, to the job site. And I used to leave my house two hours early so that way I could be an hour early for work. And almost everybody I worked with was like, what is this kid doing? Why is he here an hour early? Is he that freaking gung-ho a little bit? And at the same time, I had experienced being very late and our roles were moderately important, I would say. And that was due to things like car accidents. I remember one time I was heading up and uh, I was only a few cars behind the cars that were stopped before the police cars. And there was an overpass and somebody had crashed into the overpass. I think they fell asleep or something. And they had to be life lighted to... A hospital that had like some level of care you know trauma care to to support that that person I don't know if they made it or not but it's like that's gonna take some time you got to cut traffic you got to call a helo in helo's gonna come in they're gonna try to get the patient out of the car so they're gonna use the jaws of life cut that thing open like a tuna can pull that person out backboard them c-spine all that stuff and then they're gonna put them on the helo and then they're gonna fly out and then now, once they have enough stuff cleared up on the road, then they can open one lane out of three to four lane traffic. And so I ended up being really late. And so the reason I would go two hours early is that was the one thing I could control. I would never wanted to be late. I didn't like getting, you know, uh, you know, you don't get written up the first time, but you get talked to kind of thing. I'm sure you all feel me. And I didn't want that to happen. So what I did was I, I left two hours early. And freaking, I would either get there early or when I experienced more car accidents, because I did this for 10 years, there was a lot of car accidents that I experienced. <laughs> yeah, you're laughing because you know. And guess what? Sometimes I would be right on time. And people either thought this guy either slept in or there was an accident. And guess what? That's how it is. If you can control it and that's what you're focusing on, then that's what you got to do. I can confirm that is true. He would always <laughs> show up. So, yeah, sometimes I would see you walk in there. It It's still like an hour and a couple of minutes before it, we even started working and you're already there. I was like, what the hell? Because I am, I've, I had been always the complete opposite. I was constantly showing up a minute or two right before clocking. And I was always on that edge. Because, and I was commuting about an hour south from where I was living. Uh, and this was in uh, down in South Florida. So knowing that traffic down there, <laughs> somehow I would always risk it and try to leave the house maybe five, ten minutes sometimes early, sooner than, than, than what I had last done. That It never worked. But yeah, I completely understand the logic of in, in those situations where you have unreasonable people that expect you there at a certain time and there is no excuse then it, <laughs> yep yeah you got to do what you got to do i just want to say 
Nate lives six minutes away from work right now, and he still shows up an hour early. <laughs> yeah. Just it's a habit. habit now. Oh, yep. What up, listeners? We wanted to take a moment and express our gratitude for your support and for taking the time to tune into our podcast. We value your feedback and recommendations, and we'd love to hear your stories about how stoicism or any other self-improvement practice has impacted your journey. Please send your stories or any info you'd like to share with us to thestreetstoics at gmail.com. Also, don't forget to follow us on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at The Street Stoics to stay connected and receive latest updates. If you enjoy our content, please consider subscribing, liking, and sharing with others. Thank you again for being part of our community. And speaking about judgment... And I'm going to have to prep this next part a little bit. This is a podcast on stoicism. We talk about stoic quotes a lot and how they apply to us, application to life, or what our perspectives are. This next quote I'm going to read is actually titled The Commando Prayer. And so I don't want people to get the wrong idea that like this is some religious thing. I just think that this quote is so relatable to Stoicism that we should explore it. And I'm going to tie that in with judgment here, here in just a second. So without further ado, let me get it, uh, get it out there for you. So, the commando prayer. Give me, my God, what you still have. Give me what no one asks for. I do not ask for wealth, nor success, nor even health. People ask you so often, God, for all of that. That you cannot have any left. Give me, my God, what you still have. Give me what people refuse to accept from you. I want insecurity and disquietude. I want turmoil and brawl. And if you should give me these things, my God, once and for all, let me be sure to have them always, for I will not always have the courage to ask for them. Ooh. So, tying that in, the premise of this prayer, right, is asking for discomfort. It's asking for challenge. It's asking for obstacles. How are you going to grow without all of those things? So many times, whether you pray, you're religious, or you know, just on some down luck, you're like, man, I wish I had it better than I do now, right? I wish it would just magic button, poof, and it's gone. Rather than push through the obstacle and see it for what it is, tying it back in to judgment and perception. Our perception of let's say physical pain is only what we choose for it to be. Jay and I used to work with this guy and I'll give him a shout out, but I know he'll never hear it because uh, he's not a technologically guy, but John Stroud. John Stroud was an amazing man. When I first met John Stroud, His catchphrase, the thing he would say every day, multiple times a day, was, live in the dream. And sometimes he would give me the full spiel. Yeah, and he would give me the full spiel, and he would say, best day ever, live in the dream. And that's the way I want it to be. And it drove me up the freaking wall every day. Every time I pass him, best day ever, live in the dream. That's the way I want to be. Or just living the dream. Hey, John, how are you doing? Living the dream. And I was like, come on. Come on, man. 
and it was my perception right we are we're already starting to see that so one day i get the courage to go up to john stroud he's a big guy he's senior he's been around the block and he could throw down and i go up to john nicest guy ever and i was like john why do you say that shit why why do you say that every day and he says i'm gonna tell you bro he says because if i start saying it pretty soon it'll happen and from that point on it changed my life it changed my freaking life i felt so bad for even questioning this guy and being annoyed by it and i'm i know i'm not the only one y'all heard jay he was like yup yup he said it <laughs> because we heard it all the time but the thing was is i never knew why and when i knew why he said it the same amount going forward and that was like not even a half a year into this job i worked there for just about 10 years and so for nine and a half years i heard this guy say the same thing and it never bugged me again and it was because of the perception shift i had that perception i am glad that finally i i somehow got the clarity of mind to just ask him why he was doing it because it changed my life it was meant to be so my judgment changed jay it looks like you got something to say you want to jump in yeah i i, I guess i just want to say thank you because that's a, a memory that i think i would have not remembered about ever again because yeah. that was a name that I completely had forgotten until you mentioned it right now. I, I was like, wow, yeah, I remember this dude. And you describing exactly what you, what you said. <clears throat> now, looking back and reflecting on it, I, 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 I was the same way. I just, to me, I looked at him and I was like, what, what is going on with this guy? Like, why does he always <laughs> say that every day? Every day? Living a dream, right. living a dream. Um, there was another, there was another phrase, something about, uh, paradise. I, there was another one that he would say uh, regarding paradise or something like that, or vacation, oh, I don't man. remember, something like that. But I remember, it, yeah, it was, it was constant. And to now remember that and, and just reflect back and I was like, yeah, that, that's true. That guy was a really good guy. He, he really lived that every day. And that's, that was a positive thing. That was a positive thing that. I, you know, we experienced to have to have worked with a guy like that. That's, that's a cool thing. Cause you actually yeah. see what that is like for somebody later on in life to still conduct themselves in that manner, regardless of whatever the environment is that they work in, they still try to make the best of it because it's the perception, your perception of everything that's going around you. You make it so that you can enjoy it somehow. There's some way you can find a way to make even the shittiest situations in your own perspective something good. Right. And so I'm, I'm going to keep moving on. Uh, I'll watch out for you guys. But tying this back in, right? Because our ego drives our judgment of things. And too often we meet a circumstance in which we feel this discomfort and we decide to, you know, let those things, those external things affect our internal monologue. And so bringing it back to John Stroud, the whole reason I brought him up was John was a special type of guy. Okay. He was a Christian dude, so he wasn't into the stoicism thing. He always thought I was kind of funny when I got into stoicism. Uh, you know, it's a perception, but he was really cool about it, too. He would listen. And he didn't cast that judgment, man. And it was awesome. And so relating it to, like, physical things, too, because we already talked about the mind, right, and how how that affected us. But I watched John Stroud. 
He was running. We used to work in Portland, okay? Portland, Oregon, for those that don't know, they use uh, what's called a max line system. It's a, a, like a rail car that goes through the city. They also have buses, but that was one of the popular things. And John used to take the max. He was never too too good to do that. He, he's saving money. Simple guy. Pretty stoic, to be honest. And it was raining one day. And John was trying to catch the max. It was stopped, and he wanted to make sure he didn't have to wait another hour or whatever it was before the next one. And so he goes running out there, and next thing you know, we got a guy watching cameras, and all of a sudden, somebody's like, hey, dude, John's down. And I'm like, oh, shoot. What do you mean John's down? And they're like, yeah, dude, he tripped on the uh, sidewalk. And I was like, well, is he good? And we're watching it, and he fell hard, right? Like, I watched the video later, he fell hard. And he landed with his ribs right on the edge of that curb. He ends up jumping up, springing up like a freaking black-tailed deer in the Pacific Northwest. He must have bucked up like 15 feet above the ground, taller than the train, and he shoots in there like Wile E. Coyote from a freaking Acme cartoon, right? He jumps on that max line, and he's gone. And we're like, oh, man, does anybody have John's number so we can call him, see if he's good? And we didn't, so we're like, oh, he must be good. And it kind of sweated off. We saw him, you know, a few times, and we're like, John, hey, you know, how are you doing? He's like, well, you know, my side's kind of sore, but that's it. And this guy, come to find out later, this guy gets, like, some teeth pulled or something. He had to have some dental work done. I don't remember. Oh, no, he had his... Uh, nasal cavity reconstructed because he was having problems breathing he comes to work the next day the doctor's like hey you know you need a, a note to get out of work for a little bit it's gonna take about a week or two to heal up and John says no thank you and I on the break side you know we're on break and I'm like John dude why don't you why don't you take some time or you need some meds or something? He says, bro, I don't take meds. I was like, what? And he was like, no, it's all in here. And he points to his head. And I was like, what? Aren't you in pain? And he's like, pain is what you make of it. And so he was controlling what he could control, which were his thoughts. This guy came back to work the very next day after this surgery and you know he had his nose taped up his eyes were a little black because you know blood accumulation and stuff and he wasn't even taking an ibuprofen and I was like man that's stoic right and so a follow-up to what I have about the story about mr. John Stroud here Now, I'm not saying that this is an easy task by any means, because John was a special type of guy, but it's something we're striving to be. We need to focus on choosing how we control that external stimuli and how it affects our internal stimuli. And as Marcus Aurelius once said, I think it was Meditations, do away with the opinion, I am harmed. And the harm is cast away too. Do away with being harmed, and harm disappears. That, in a nutshell, my friends, is stoicism. Focus on what you can control. If you think about your physical pain, if you think about your situation... It's going to affect you. If you're thinking, let's say you're practicing for a sport, for a task, for a job, and you start thinking about what could go wrong and how it could go wrong, and you're doing that as you're performing said task, said sport, said you know job duty, it's going to turn out negative because that's all you're thinking about. And so if we can control our perception, if we can control our thoughts, soon you'll see that we can both control our emotions and our judgment. 
All right, guys. What do you think? The judgment that we have comes from that, right? Like just that individual perspective that we all have. And to be able to control that is is what the purpose of, of, of things are, right? To you you do away with with that that opinion or that feeling of judgment that you allow it to control you and you realize there is really it's it's all it is is it just holds you back it grounds you it 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 causes you to live a certain life that it's it's not ideal right so i from my perspective when i when i when i state that it's i grew up in in an environment where and, and obviously like in high school and stuff where you had to look a certain way in order to kind of fit in right i i i, I had to experience that type of upbringing and that type of you know lifestyle where growing up you know everyone's judged kind of by you know what they're wearing what what your your shoes are you know what you if you got the newest things so people dictated stuff like that right about who you wanted to hang out with based on stuff like that um popularity and all of that was you know all throughout high school so it, it, i lived through that right and growing up in that i mean i didn't know any better i didn't know that you know i didn't have to live that way um but you get sucked in to that lifestyle and then that, that's the lifestyle that really brews a lot of judgment where you just you look down upon someone just because of what they're wearing or you know the way that they look and not basing it upon you know who they are you know what what type of you know how do they conduct themselves how how do they operate how how are they as a as an individual right none of that is taken into consideration it's First, based upon how you're dressed, how do you look, and and then everything else after that follows. And it's it's such a negative way of living. And having left and moved to Portland and gotten to experience like how that's it's not it's not a thing over there. It's it's not that big. I I got to meet a lot of people that you know people like you that had to commute from like places outside of you know, a, a, a downtown and urban area and how that perspective was life. So I, I, I got to see that everybody has, you know, a whole different up, upbringings and stuff. So my perception started changing and I became a little less judge, judgmental towards people and towards myself. And at this point, I can say, you know, from moving around and, and living in different places that I have, it's the same way, you know, you have, I can tell, especially like in certain cities that I visit, that they have that, that, that mentality, that whole, like, how they dress is, is, it has to be a certain way. And I get it. Like there's, there's times that calls for it to look to look a certain way and get dressed and 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 be able to feel good about the way that you look and dress that's it's a it's it's a good feeling i understand all of that but some people make it too much where they can't go out and have the same pair of shoes that they were seen you know last week at this party and it gets it gets as ridiculous as that right where you can't be seen with the same clothes or the same whatever at to to now not care for shit like that and and just i dress whatever i want to wear that makes me feel comfortable and that i like i mean i kind of still have a taste a certain particular taste and style but for the most part you'll find me in some crocs uh a tie-dye shirt and uh random pairs of shorts uh for the last couple of i don't know how many months now that i've been working from home uh but yeah like I, I i don't care like i go out at now and I, I just look around and people can look and say whatever they want I, I i i don't care because i i now understand that whatever their judgment they may have is an internal thing that they have going on with themselves so why am i going to allow that to affect me 
that's not it's not something that that I want to live by by the opinions of somebody else as to how I am living, how I am conducting myself. I feel fine the way that I am and I'm happy. So if I'm happy, then I don't care who else has an opinion as to anything about me. And that's 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 to the point of where I've grown pretty much of just not caring about, you know, the judgment and not being judgmental as myself. I mean, I I tr- I always practice it. I find myself in situations where I revert kind of back and have that thought, but I I have those inner battles where I'm where I start justifying and start saying, "Okay, hey, remember this person had a certain lifestyle and they weren't able to they didn't live they didn't grow up the same way you did they probably don't are not from this area there so they 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 stick out and that's always the case and that's okay that's okay because that's how things are i mean people just we're all we're all living here in this reality and just coexisting you're bound to run into people with a completely different lifestyle than yours and that's just how life is man yeah speaking about how life is i'm sure we've all heard the phrase perception is reality either from our parents or in the workplace perception is reality I used to not think that was true, or I used to, maybe I knew it was true, but I thought it was a bunch of a load of crap. Mainly because it didn't work out in my favor, right? But thinking about it, perception is reality, and our perception is something that we can control. So then, if we can control our perception of things, we can control our own reality and as humans we like being in control of our lives reality is the thing the space in which we live so if you want to take control of your life start with your perception if you want to be a better person start with your perception if you want to control your judgment of things, start with your perception. All right. Mike, I know you got one more thing for us here. What you got? So, um, listen to all what you guys all have to say. Um, it reminds me of a Seneca quote. Um, Life is very short and anxious for those who forget the past. Neglect the present and fear the future. So, um, how does this all, how does that even tie into judgment or perception or anything that we're talking about now? Um, so, to me, like if you forget the past and where you came from or not recognize where other people have came from in the past, um, and worry about what's going to happen in the future if if this continues or if uh, whatever behavior you're looking at right um but focusing on the like do not neglect the present um neglecting the present you you can't prepare for the future um because the present's going to affect the future and it's going to affect your perception on the past uh it's um, taking it moment by moment and and just making uh, not making those judgments based on the the future or the past, but focusing on on your present and where what's happening right in front of you. Slow down, take a look at what's happening. And how how can we how can we learn how can we uh, move on from whatever is is happening and and avoid making those judgments? That's all I had. Uh, Mike, as you were talking, 
something sparked into my head. I'm trying to remember who said it. Oh, it was Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice. Jerry Rice said, today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I will do what others can't. When you were talking about that quote, you said from Seneca, Mike? Yeah, from Seneca. Yeah. I thought about this Jerry Rice quote. Today I will do what others won't, so tomorrow I can do what others can't. And some people might be confused, like, oh, I thought we we're not supposed to worry about the future. And that quote is not. That quote is strictly focusing on the present. The present, which is the gift, right? And it's talking about today. You have one life to live, right? And that's why, you know, we've done all the memento mori, more fate, and we're getting into the stoic thing. What, stoic, what Stoicism has done for me is focus on the present, being present, getting to enjoy right now. Because right now is the only thing that freaking exists. And so that Jerry Rice quote, you know, he's a football player or something. And he was probably talking about, you know, how he got good. And that's a physical thing. And it could be a physical thing. Maybe your thing is, is man, I want to I wanna do this basketball thing or this football, soccer, whatever. And, or I want to work out. I want to be bigger. Or I want to be thinner. Whatever your thing. I want to be more healthy. Whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Do today what others won't. So tomorrow you can do what others can't. And how could you apply that to your mind too and your thoughts and things? If you're talking and interacting with people, maybe, you know, say those things today. Don't wait just because you feel a little discomfort. Say it now. Or it could be the complete opposite. Maybe today that person just needs you to listen. And you're only going to be that socially aware if you're living in the present. All right, before we wrap it up here, I think Jay's got something for us. Jay, what you got? Uh, just wanted to give a quick shout out um, to all the all the people that have been listening to our podcast from uh, from what our from what I'm seeing here in our analytics, right? Uh, yeah. For the podcast. So it's it's telling us here that there's people tuning in from obviously here in the US. Yeah. Shout out to whomever is listening to us in Thailand, Germany, Yay. uh United Kingdom which uh is broken down into England and Scotland. Oh shoot. And somebody in Canada as well has tuned in. Nice. And then here in the US, uh definitely a lot of plays from Florida, Oregon. Then we have some people listening in, in Pennsylvania, Colorado, Kansas, Arkansas, California, uh, Wisconsin, Illinois, and Georgia. That one from Georgia kind of concerns me because it's right by where my uh, office is from work. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm wondering if somebody uh, has been tuning in that, uh, from work, which they, I don't, haven't told anybody about this. Yeah. yeah. They're learning about you. That's, That's awesome. about your That's... perception, bro. Yeah, it is yeah. awesome. All right. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, awesome. We love it. We love that. I man, that's pretty eye-opening. I didn't think people from other countries, I mean, we just kicked this off, but people from other countries are listening. That's that's awesome. And if we can keep building that community, and start interacting we can get this thing more specific uh hopefully we get our skills up to the point where maybe we can start having some you know guests on and you, you could talk about you know your stoic uh journey and we could get a new perspective man that's what it's all about that's that's freaking awesome 
yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, I get I get some messages on uh, the Instagram account. A lot of people end up messaging me already on there asking, you know, just either supporting, saying, you know, motivating stuff like, you know, I, I really like the content that you guys are posting. I really like the stuff that you guys got going on here. Keep it up, you know, st- stuff like that, feeling motivation. Um, and then I have had inquiries about people wanting to to be a guest. I mean, I, I I've asked them to join the community. I uh, want to better understand, you know, whom whom is it that we are trying to bring on here? But I'm I'm definitely in, I'm open. I'm interested in, uh, like you said, seeing, hearing and and seeing someone else's perspective of, especially if they're practitioners of stoicism, to understand, you know, how is it that that you are conducting yourself in life? How is it that you live day to day, preaching or or just you know embodying that right just the that lifestyle of you know be being stoic uh to hear that other perspective i mean i i definitely would would enjoy it yes definitely wait does this mean i'm not a guest anymore (laughs) i think we can officially make uh mike the third member he's he's now a (laughs) part of a co-host now (laughs) <laughs> there we go. There yeah. We go. There yeah. you go. He's been promoted. They <laughs> promoted. There we go. Yeah, buddy. That doesn't yeah, happen and... very often. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> there we go. Made his day or night. So, uh, yeah, for those of you who are interested in interacting with us, uh, find us on social media. Uh, we got a Discord. Usually, I think Jay put uh, one of those link pages on our social media. So if you find us on there, Street Stokes, uh, you can you can link up. You can communicate with us through that. We also have a Discord community going on, and we would love to see uh, some uh, more perspectives in that. I think we're up to, I don't know, last time I checked was like 50-something Jay's always telling me it's growing. Uh, Jay, you you got more details on that? Yeah, it's somewhere around there. Um, 40-something to 50. Uh, accurate number is 46. That's what it is. There there we go. Yeah, yeah we got 46. So we have we have a few people on there that are, are pretty active. Kind of uh, right. now it seems more daily, uh, kind of just post, po- uh, posting stuff. Uh, I have kind of been... A little busy with work and stuff, so I haven't been posting right. as much. But I'm 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 ready to contribute more to it because I I like that that we're having more interactions and we're seeing all of that. Right? People are asking you know those type of questions, especially the type of one the type of one the type that we are asking ourselves. Right? right. What do I need to do, or how can I improve myself? What is it that other people are doing that I can try and apply to myself so that I can improve myself in life. You know, I, some people are giving us their perspective of, you know, what they do daily in order to, you know, function and, you know, be that embodiment of stoicism. I'm, I'm, I'm still learning and I I like hearing what I hear. Yeah, me too, man. I, I really appreciate, uh, those that reach out, those that are active and, if you're looking for something and you're not trying to be that interactive, you know, you're you're not quite sure or you're feeling like, oh, I'd like to learn a little bit more before I do that. Our Discord actually is set up so you don't actually have to be in every conversation or any conversation, really. Jay set it up so uh, basically there's like an intro to Stoicism section and there's some ideas. And we kind of offshoot. Uh, away from stoicism of, as well, you know, talking about health and fitness and just other related topics. But there's there's tons of good information on there. We like it to be kind of like a hub. And if you all join that community, you could input the hub or, or it, have input on there. Or you could just use it as a resource because that's what we want it to be too. It's not that everybody has to be talking or give us these ideas or say anything to us. It's just a nice resource that these are the things that brought us here. So we like to share those. And then we, 
if you're willing to share, we like to learn how you got into it too, because then we get to take something away from that. It's another perspective that we didn't see, and it opens our perception. And if any of you are fans of Carl Sagan, you know, he talks about the mind being like a parachute. It only works when it's open. So, uh, without further ado, uh, I think we're going to wrap things up here. Uh, today's discussion on judgment, let's just take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. Uh, we've discovered the power of Stoic philosophy in helping us detach from the opinions and judgments of others and how we how this basically can lead to greater inner peace and resiliency and we all should work on that resiliency even if you think you're resilient there's still room for improvement right or maybe you're not so much we can get a little bit more right baby steps uh, but by focusing on what we can control and letting go of what we can't we can cultivate a sense of serenity that allows us to navigate life's challenges with more clarity and purpose. So join us uh, next time, episode 7, uh, where we're going to be diving into topics of journaling and mindfulness and exploring how these practices can help us cultivate a deeper sense of self-awareness and connection with our inner selves. So thank you for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time.